forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to online worship with Alito United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you are joining us from wherever you are in the world. If you're following us on social media right now, take just a moment to press like or to press share so that other people can join us as well. And now will you join with us as we uh, sing and worship together? Let's sing. of Orient are bearing gifts we traverse afar field and fountain moor and mountain following yonder star born a king on Bethlehem's plain gold I'll bring to crown him again king Forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding. Before we go to God in prayer, I invite you to remember a few people who have asked for prayers. Um, sympathies for uh, Scott and Deanne Ritchie on the passing of his mother, Mary Fane Ritchie. Also continue prayers for Tom Seiler, for Mike Mock, for Linda Burroughs, and praise to the Lord for all the healings that have taken place. Will you go to God in prayer with me, please? Holy God, we thank you for this new day. We pause to praise you, to worship you, to give you glory and honor and thanksgiving. So often we come to you with our needs and our wants and our desires, our fears and our hopes, 
But today we pause to come to you in thanks for all the healings that we've seen take place. Healings of heart, healings of body, healings of souls. We just praise you for those, Lord. And we pray that you would continue to answer prayers and hear our prayers and that we would continue to turn to you and trust you as our God. And Lord, we do bring new prayers today, new requests. We lift them to you on behalf of ourselves and our church family, asking for more healing and more comfort and for just a, a feeling of peace, Lord, that only you can provide. We thank you for our family of believers. And as we enter into this new year, we just look to you. We pray that it'll be a kinder, gentler year, that we will find solutions. And we praise you for, the, for all the research that's been done, the, the creative minds that have continued to flourish amidst challenges. We love you, Lord. We know that you are the source of all good things. So may we continue to look to you with trust trust, and faith. Thank you again for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, as we continue to celebrate his birth. May we remember every day that Christ is with us and he walks this journey of life with us and that he calls us to share that love with everyone we meet. We love you, Lord. We pray all these things in Jesus' precious name as we share the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? We have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for, it, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of, Judea, of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. This Sunday, we're going to talk about the nature of arriving, particularly the three, what we call wise men, or later on, three kings, to state that Jesus was the king. It was a sign of humanity and the recognition that they had come to meet with the king of kings. Before we do, let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, in spite of the limitation of the presenter, we pray that your will is done through the words that are spoken this day by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask these things in the name of the risen Christ Jesus and all of God's church said, amen. The three wise men came to see Jesus and it was in an opportune time. And it was in an opportune time because Mary was tired, and Joseph was tired and <coughs> excuse me, he'd been up with her all night. 
They finally had some quiet time, and all of a sudden the first wise man opens up a couple of bales of hay. He says, hello, I've just come to bring some gold. And Joseph says, listen, we're really tired. You need to leave. You can go ahead and leave the gold, but thank you for that gift. And the second wise man all of a sudden comes behind him. He leans the bale over and he says, hey, I, I've, I've come to bring frankincense. And Joseph says, oh my goodness, two gifts, but please leave. We're tired. Third wise man pushes the bales of hay over and he says, hey, hey, I, I, I've got... And Joseph says, no, look, that's enough. We're tired. Thank you. And he says, but wait, there's myrrh. Now, right now, you're laughing so hard, you can't stand it. I had another joke to tell you, but it was offensive. So you can ask me about that joke later, and I'll tell you maybe outside the walls of the church, but it's pretty funny. Now, I want to tell you this, that I say that because the three gifts, there could have been nine gifts. There could have been 14 gifts. We don't know. There could have been more than three wives' men. There could have been more, but it's okay to, to do three, but... I always think it's interesting during the nativity scene, if you notice this, the wise men come right up like they drove up I-20 and to see Jesus and they're walking across the parking lot. You ever seen churches do that? Like they do a live nativity and in that live nativity, this is what they do. So Jesus is born and within 32 seconds, three wise men stroll as they get out of their Lexus. They stroll together to come. It's not really how it worked. It was sometime later. Now, they've had to flee essentially. They went to go have a census taken while Quirinius is governor. We know that. We know the Romans were keeping tabs. But I want to focus on verse 3 of the 1 through 12 verses that we're talking today. Because it's something that we quite often miss in the story. Herod was greatly disturbed upon hearing the news. And then it says, and all of Jerusalem with him. Now, that's very interesting because Matthew is written with a post-theological resurrection narrative in mind. That is to say, Matthew is written addressing the fact that the Jewish community, the hierarchy of the Jewish community and the Jewish faith, rejected the nature of Jesus initially. They weren't allowed in the synagogues any longer, and yet the Gentiles of all people, the filthy Gentiles... We're getting the idea that this was real and true and that what had been prophesied had come to fruition. Now I say that today because we have to look at the nature of the second portion of verse 3. Herod is deeply troubled, but let's look at the second portion. The Bravo version or the beta version is, and all of Jerusalem with him. You see, Herod was a puppet essentially of Rome. Now Herod only lasted Four years is estimated after the birth of Jesus. And we know he died because, like it says in a Pink Floyd song, and the worms ate up his brain. You didn't know that about Pink Floyd, did you? You catch a little Herod in a Pink Floyd song. Don't listen to Pink Floyd, though. It's disturbing. It's weird. People think they get it, but they don't. It's kind of like eating brie. People say it's good. It's not that good. I say that to you because... We need to focus on the nature of the second half. All of Jerusalem with them, which means here comes the king of kings. There's already one king. And essentially they've decided there's really not room for another. Now I submit to you today that we all need to remember, just like Jerusalem did, that there is room for the king of kings in our lives. So what that means is we must give up our life our priorities and our value systems in order to constantly adopt the nature of the new king. All the value systems, all the norms that are in place, all those things that you think should be in place, Jesus comes and it's all essentially turned on its ear and we have to look at it through a new narrative. The kings represent a new narrative. A new narrative of humanity coming to reconcile with God's will, not even the will of man seeking the will of God, but more so the new covenant. And when the kings arrive, Jesus is validated and recognized. 
Now, I talked about Christmas decorations. On the 6th, you're cleared to take them down. Epiphany occurs. Jesus is recognized as the King of Kings. Truly, not just prophesied, but he is here. He's the King of Kings. Now, I like to picture a two-year-old, and Mary keeps saying, Jesus, pay attention. You ever seen a two-year-old? They don't care anything about gold. They don't care anything about frankincense, and they certainly don't care anything about myrrh. And Mary and Joseph are having to say, thank you. Can you imagine Mary saying, Jesus, tell them thank you. He could care less, but it's the act itself where they're humbling themselves before the King of Kings. And so what we're talking about this Sunday is that you and I individually need to take that journey to recognize the Christ child and what it means for us and the priority of the new covenant of Almighty God. And ask God to instill that and impart that to us in the nature of the power of the Holy Spirit enacted in our lives. And you'll find that your understanding and your logic and the understanding of God's way of thinking versus ours or ourselves quite often is much different. I'm going to ask that you try something this very week. Something or someone has troubled you, or maybe both, in your life. It may be illness, it may be relationship, it may be situational, it may be personal, it may be external, it may be internal, but something in your life interferes a little bit with your inner peace. And I'm going to ask that you get on your knees in a private time this week and pray that Almighty God releases you from that and gives you an understanding of a new hope, a new joy, and a new peace that strengthens your faith and that you seek God's will and once again turn your life over to Jesus Christ, this Christ child, who is the true meaning of God's love for you. Pray for those situations or people or circumstances that envelop you. And pray that you make room for a new king. And that you take the Jerusalem culture and you remove it from your life. And without fear, you replace it with the attitude and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. We come to that time of communion where we invite you to gather your elements during this time, be it bread and juice of some sorts, so you can join us together. Let us join together in our prayer of confession. Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all that who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another by saying, Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. In the Methodist Church, we have what's called an open table. We do not believe Jesus is denominational, nor is this sacrament denominational. We believe it is a table of Jesus Christ and all who call on him as their Lord and Savior, are welcome at that table. And so regardless of your denomination, because this is not a denominational practice, we have what in the Methodist Church what we call an open table. And what we'd like to share with you is on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he gave thanks to Almighty God, and he broke the bread. And he presented it to the disciples and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. And as often as you do this, remember me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he presented it to the disciples and said, This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And as often as you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me.
Church of Jesus Christ, this is the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Church of Jesus Christ, this is the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for you and for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let us pray. Almighty God, although we are not worthy to gather the crumbs up under your table, we know that you always have mercy upon us. Heavenly Father, grant that we serve you in newness of life and evermore dwell in Christ and Christ in us. And we ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all of God's church said together, amen. Every time we meet, we offer an invitation. It is from Jesus Christ. It is not from me nor this congregation. If you'd like to join with this congregation, and I stress this congregation because each Methodist church stands on its own, you would be asked if you will support this congregation with your prayers, presence, gifts, and service. Lastly, witness. Or if you'd like to be baptized or you'd like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But I submit to you today that if you choose to join with this church, you won't find a better group of people who are sinners just trying to get it right. And we would celebrate that with you this day. This is a time in our service when we have the opportunity to give back to God out of all that God has given to us, especially through his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, there are several different ways that you can give back. Of course, uh, the easiest way is to do online, uh, to press give at the top of our website, alitoumc.org. Uh, you can also, of course, mail in a check. Uh, and there's text message as well, and the information is on the screen. However it is that you choose to give, we ask that you give back generously. you are and all things wise and wonderful you are in my darkest night you brightened up the skies the song will rise I'll sing a song of hope sing along again creator God calling me your friend sing praise my soul to the maker of the skies a song will rise I will sing a song of hope sing along God of heaven come down heaven come the benediction. Almighty God, as we go out into your world, remind us in the places where we are Jerusalem and there's no room for another king because we're preoccupied with something that we give way to your will, that we celebrate the new covenant, 
and that we ourselves come to the King of Kings and know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We ask these things for all our future hope and joy and peace in this new year. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing a song of hope, sing along, God of heaven.